Okay, good morning nerds, and uh, today we have the K702. I've got to design a modification for this, so I thought it'd be a good chance to kind of have it apart and see how they're made and go through some of the weird features in this thing. Uh, yeah, because I've had a couple of these apart before, and from what I remember, I don't know whether they've changed the way they make them or not, but um, certainly a couple of years ago there were some, some weird design decisions in these. But, you know, very popular, very good headphone. So... Weird is sometimes good. So we have quite a thick headband material. It looks like leather and stitched, very nice. I really like the mechanism to make it rest on your head properly. So rather than having a clip on the side, you've got um, sliders that slide up and down the headband, held on with like an elastic. So that kind of automatically adjusts or self-adjusts. You just kind of pull it into place. And it is very, very, they are very, very comfortable. Uh, they've got quite a big opening in the, in the pad, so it goes over the ear. Clamping force isn't too high. I think overall the headband design, really good on these. Very, very comfortable. So, it is time to get into them. So let's start off by removing the pad, which is always the first thing you can do with these, from what I remember. Yeah, it's twist, twist to unlock. And inside the pad, we have a disc of foam, which will be there for tuning. You've also got this, this area of foam around the outside, which will help seal the pad to the to the casing and then just a bit of mesh over the middle uh, to, to stop dust and hairs and stuff from getting in. You've also got a plastic ring here which is what clicks into place. So quite a complex pad design. They're also not, uh, I don't know if you can see that, they're thicker one side than the other so they're a slightly angled pad. Yeah so uh, yeah quite a complex pad design on those but very comfortable you know doing the job. Let's just uh, remove the other one. Hang on a bit. That's better. Um, right, so next. Uh, next we're going to have to remove this grill doodad. And uh, yeah, from what I remember you have to twist this. So the easiest way to do it is get something in those holes and twist. I'm not sure I've got anything sharp to hand. Let's have a look because I don't want to damage these. I can find a pointy screwdriver. There we go. So that's just like a eighth of a turn. That's re released it. There we go. So that's that bit off. That's uh, just silver plastic on these. So we got that part, and then underneath, you can see we've got a couple of screws holding on the next part, and you can see the wires through from the from the socket in there. So we'll just get these get these off. So it's been a while since I've pulled some of these apart, so I have a vague recollection of what happens next. There's something that comes unclipped and it feels like it's going to break from what I remember. Screws. Oh, there's one screw. And there's another screw. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So. So this section is uh, screwed and clipped into place. And this is the bit that I need to remake because we want to make a balanced version of these. So we want to make something where you can easily swap out the, the socket in the bottom. So we're going to remake this with a four pin socket in. Right, so under here, so you've got quite a big screw holding the ear cup in place. So that's nicely, nice and solid in there. Yeah, so here is one of the weird things about these headphones. Most headphones, you'll have a wire that goes over the headband to the other ear. On these, they actually use the spring steel of the headband, so the wires are soldered onto the 
metal parts of the headband which carry the signal over to the other ones and you're thinking oh no you know it's blah 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 blah, blah. is that going to be good for the signal and probably fine yeah because this is a big thick bit of metal it's going to be very low impedance it's a uh, you've already got it there it's quite a novel solution a clever solution to a problem that uh, no one else has come up with I, I i like that it's a nice little nice little touch it's weird uh, but yeah, it's going to make the manufacturing process easier because you're not, not going to have to run a cable over lower impedance than a thin wire because you've got a big old fat bit of metal. And uh, yeah, yeah, just an elegant solution to a problem. The, the weird one is where these wires join onto the back of the driver. Um, let's just get this, whoop, get this apart. So what I might do is just... Uh, Break these wires off. Do I have scissors? There. So I've got to change this anyway. I've got a soldering iron on my station, so we're just going to cut these off. All right, so that's removed that part, and that's the part I've got to make up in CAD. Let's get a little bit deeper, deeper into this thing. So you've got this bit, which is part of the swivel mechanism that helps the the ear cups move. That's made of ABS, and then another part in here which lets the headphones just wiggle upwards and forwards. So th between these two, just allows articulation of the thing. But it's it's a very complex part that you've got in here. So we've got four more four more screws under here. release the driver so this is the actual ear cup and again quite a complex multi-piece part so you've got the metal mesh there this plastic inner part um, and then sandwiched in between that you've got some kind of acoustic silk which will be to do with tuning like a load of work has gone into this to design this with yeah so you've got the outer plastic you've got this metal bit here which is just for looks you've got the metal mesh which lets the ear in and out so it's probably five or six pieces of plastic and metal joined together there. This again, you can see the yoke, which allows the, the ear cut to move around. And then this is the actual driver. And as you can see, you've weirdly got like quite long stakes that come up from there when you're soldering on. And, and one thing that you've got to look out for is when you desolder these, sometimes they come away from the driver and you're in trouble. So uh, yeah, don't overheat. Don't overheat these when you're desoldering them. This is the actual driver. As you can see, there's the there's the membrane, the voice coil inside, and it looks like quite a nicely made, mm -hmm. yeah, quite a nicely made bit of kit. Um, yeah, I'm not a driver designer, but you know when you've seen a few of these things, you go, Ooh, nice. It's made of some kind of sexy material. <laughs> uh, and again, you've got some silk areas here which will restrict the flow of air in and out which will be to do the tune to do with the tuning so that's uh yeah quite quite a complicated design a lot of pieces going on there so this is like the hinge mechanism uh, it doesn't say what that's made of but it feels like a nylon this feels like a abs or something so something similar yeah, just look at all the the complexity in that. Uh, let's have a look. look. Can you see all the? That would have been a bit of a nightmare to design and mould. There seems to be an unnecessary level, unnecessary level of complexity on all of these parts. You know, whoever works at, at audio, who is it? AKG. Yeah. <laughs> so AKG designers, they get carried away. Um, it's like the opposite of bare dynamic, where it's ugly but super simple. Here is a lump of plastic. Here is a giant screw. This is a yeah, very complex multi-piece what's it? So headband, I have seen a couple of these break. So we can just remove the elastic bit there. And then these unclip by the look of it. Clip, clip. Uh, and I have seen that AKG sell replacement, replacement what's it for these. So you can replace the headband. Yeah, so that just unclips there. So that is replaceable. It's not too bad. 
Um, yeah, so overall, they're not too difficult to get into. There are some booby traps in there. Certainly, when you're desoldering, you've got to watch out for not overheating the, the driver. I've had a couple that have kind of died in the past when, when I've got them too hot. So we, we use silver solder here, so we, our soldering is normally quite hot. Uh, yeah, so you've just got to watch out for that if you, if you do mod these. And I'm hoping to reproduce this in CAD so that we can make some of these with a four pin socket because the standard these are glued in or, or possibly even molded in place. They don't want to they don't want to come out. They don't unscrew. Uh, we found the only way to get them out is to heat up the socket and then you can pull them out. But that kind of slightly melts the plastic and you you can tell that it's been done. It doesn't look super factory. So I'm going to try and reproduce that in CAD so we can redo that. Yeah, so I had to I had to do that anyway. So I thought I might as well get a video. But yes, it's, 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 pretty mad design in, inside these. It's very complicated, it's probably overly complicated, but uh, I'm sure there's good reasons for everything and the, the more I pull these apart, the more I'll learn. Yeah, whoever designed this is much like me. I tend to overcomplicate everything, make it look like, oh, but couldn't we do this? Oh yeah, and do this and it all ends up quite expensive. So cost-wise, I think these are pretty good value for money. Like the actual manufacturing process is quite complicated. Uh, obviously the sound is good as well. So I think these are, oh, good value for money. They look nice, they're well made, they sound good. It's just more complicated than they need to be, I think. I think they could probably reduce the part count with a little bit of redesign. Um, but, you know, eh, 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 it is what it is, it is what it is. Can't complain if someone's putting extra work, it's when they don't bother to do stuff that you go, eh. but here they've they've gone overboard. There's too many parts, there's, uh, there's too many complex surfaces and stuff. It works, it works, it works, and they've managed to do it for the price, so... It's all good. So anyway, that's been the AKG 702. I hope that was vaguely interesting. I'm going to get to work designing some mods for them. Uh, if you've got any questions, stick them in the thing. I'll try and answer them. I'm not. I don't know the AKG range that well. You know, I've just pulled a couple of pairs of these apart. Anyway, it's been uh, super awesome hanging out. I'll see you guys again.